Hey guys, Peter Miller here, the host of Uncharted Waters on the Discovery Channel, and today we're going to be talking about mahi-mahi fishing. Today's fishing platform is a brand new 39 Invincible with triple 400 Mercury Verados. What's really nice about the Mahi Mahi is they're acrobatic, they're colorful, they make really fast runs, and they taste great. Another cool thing about Mahi is that they grow very quickly, sometimes two to five pounds in one month. The legal limit on a Mahi is 20 inches from the nose to the fork of the tail, and you're allowed 10 Mahi per person or 60 Mahi per boat. If you have 10 people on the boat, you can only keep 60. If you got six people on the boat, you can keep 60. So bottom line is, mahi grow fast, they're delicious, and they're awesome. And I'll tell you what, it's a great thing to start somebody on a mahi fishing trip when they go offshore, because everyone gets involved and they have a great time. That's a great mark. They're solid, solid on the bottom. All right, time to get some bait, guys. We need cigars, sardines, and we need some blue runners. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do when you go mahi fishing is you're gonna wanna get a chum bag and two blocks of chum. And hopefully you can garner up and gather some bait fish behind the boat. And then you're gonna to wanna to throw out your sabiki rigs. These are a couple of versions of sabiki rigs. I like to use little gold hooks, size six. There's six hooks in a row. We tie a half ounce lead to a one ounce lead to the bottom of it that just clips on. And we basically drop this through the chum slick to attract the bait fish. And you never know what you're gonna get. You may get a pilchard, a threadfin herring, a goggle eye, a cigar minnow, a sardine, you name it, they're all out there, and even blue runners. So you're gonna be using these. Now when you catch the bait, you wanna have your bait well full, and you wanna be using a de-hooker, which is gonna de-hook all the baits as you catch them. So as you swing the sabiki rig into the boat, you wanna grab the weight, and one by one, you're gonna pop them off into the well without touching them. This allows for no reduction of slime on the fish, and when they're presented to the mahi, they look perfect, they're unharmed, and they look like they were you know, just put there for them. So the de-hooker is a very integral part of the entire process when you go fishing for any kind of fish. Well, hopefully now you've caught enough bait your bait well looks full enough and it's time to run offshore. I typically will go by the gallons in my bait well. If I have a 60 gallon bait well, I'll put in 60 big baits. If they're smaller baits, I may put 100 baits in there, but you don't want to overcrowd the well. So once that's done, you put away your bait rods and it's time to run offshore. It's always a great idea to bring a bunch of people when you go mahi fishing. The more eyes on the boat, the better you're gonna do because the bottom line is you're looking for birds. And if you go out there trolling blindly, no birds, let's put the baits out, hope for the best, you're not gonna be successful. In order to be consistent, you need to have a lot of eyes on the water looking for birds, but what you really need is a pair of binoculars. I bring binoculars on every single trip and you really need to be looking the entire time. So on this particular trip, we've got nine people on the boat. So what we'll do is we'll get out to the grounds where we believe they were, where we heard they were, thousand feet of water, stop the boat, pull back and do a full scan with the binoculars. And all of a sudden we'll see a mile down the road at 10 o'clock, we've got five birds swooping down, picking, and we know that there's something there, meaning there's gonna be bait there, there's gonna be fish under the bait, and the birds are diving down to get that bait. So bringing binoculars and a bunch of people for mahi fishing is one of the best things you can do. So when you locate the birds, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna kinda of quarter them. You don't wanna run right through the middle of them, scare everything, so I'll run alongside, I'll run behind or whatever, and we're trying to see if the birds are moving south, if they're moving north, west, east. So we wanna kind of like quarter them and stay near them and try to figure out what's going on. We're gonna look for fish or bait getting up in the air. We're gonna look for mahi greyhounding after them under the birds, and we're gonna watch for the birds to swoop. So what we typically do is we'll bring out a small lure like this with about 40 pound test, 50 pound test, and we'll put up one rod out, maybe two rods out, and we're gonna hope to get a bite with this one particular lure to start off the entire frenzy. Once you get a mahi on behind the boat, you wanna keep it in the water. 
Mahi tend to stick with their buddy that's hooked up. So you want to put that rod in the rod holder, wind the fish close to the boat, and more likely than not, the mahi are gonna to come towards you. So at that point, you have a few decisions to make. You need to determine quickly what size hook and what pound leader material and what size rod you're gonna use. If you got the big boy showing up, you gotta go with heavier tackle because they'll put a heavy beating on the tackle that you use. But if you're in five to seven, eight pounders, it's okay to use smaller gear. It's a lot of fun to fight. And the reason for that is because you wanna be able to make nice casts with light baits, light leader, and you wanna be very mobile. I might be running the boat right at the birds, and all of a sudden the fish is way off to the left, and I'm gonna tell my guy, hey, I know we're heading at 12 o'clock, I need you to cast at nine o'clock right now as far as you can. Typically, you wanna cast with the wind, so I will set my guys up to be able to cast a long cast with the wind. You rarely wanna position your anglers where the wind is in their face, so you wanna get them playing the wind like you would in golf, if you will. So spinners are the way to go when you're catching mahi. What I like to do is I bring a selection of J-hooks. You always wanna use J-hooks when you're mahi fishing because a circle hook, which is great for conservation and great for sailfish and billfish, is mandatory, yet it's not mandatory for mahi. A mahi typically, when they feel the pressure, they will jump towards what's giving them the pressure and they'll come at you and it's hard to hook a fish when they're jumping at you with a circle hook. So we like to use J-hooks. In my hand, I'm holding four different sizes and these will show you kind of what I like to use depending on the size of the fish. I have a, a large J-hook here, a um, little smaller, a little smaller, and even smaller than that. And if I have to, I'll even camouflage an entire hook with a chunk of ballyhoo or squid. When you hook on the baits, you either want to put the hook through their back, you could put it from their chin through their nose, or you can actually hook them near the anal fin. It doesn't matter. If you've got some fresh live bait, you're going to hook up. If you can't get live bait, it's always good to buy frozen ballyhoo, frozen squid, thaw them out, have a cutting board, cut all these baits into chunks, and then you can kind of pitch them out, get the fish feeding, they get into a frenzy mode, and then anything you throw towards them, they're going to eat. And if they're finicky, what I really like to do is go really light, 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 and I'll go to 20 pounds straight, right off the reel. No leader, no nothing. 20 pound mono, straight to a small J hook, and they'll eat it every time. When you're bringing these fish into the boat, you want to be productive and you want to be as quick as possible. So a longer shank will allow you to get the hook out even faster. Matter of fact, we'll even use the dehooker that we use for the bait to unhook the mahi. So basically, we'll dehook them right into the fish box. And that makes it much easier. You don't have to retie and you become very effective and that way you can catch more and more mahi. When it comes time to bring in the fish into the boat, you need to make a decision as to whether the fish is a swinger, where you're gonna swing them in the boat, or is it a gaffer? Do we need to gaff this fish to make sure that we get it in the boat? If you have a three to five to six pounder on, it's possible to swing it into the boat. And the key to swinging it in the boat is basically taking your hand, pinching the line between your hand and the foregrip on the spinning rod, keeping about six to eight feet of line out on the rod and using the inertia of the rod, your hand holding the drag tight and swinging it into the box and you're gonna be a winner. However, I like to take an eagle eye view of the hook and to see where it is in the fish's mouth before I make that call. If it's in a hole, where you see it's this big and it's wide open or it's right in the skin of their lips, I'm gonna say, you know what guys, I know it's a smaller fish, but please get the gaff. I know my clients or my friends really want this fish and they wanna take it home for dinner. And sometimes we may only see two, three mahi in a day. Today, we saw a lot of mahi, so it didn't really matter, but that's the difference. So the key, grab the foregrip, pinch the line tight, use the inertia, swing them in. But then all of a sudden, you get one that's like six, eight, nine pounds, that's not a swinger. You try to swing that in, you're gonna lose your fish. That's when you say get the gaff. And you don't need to make a perfect shot, especially on a small mahi. They're typically jumping, freaking out, going all over the place. And to get a clean shot on a small mahi is difficult. On a big mahi, you can lead them, you can get them really nice in the, in the head where you wanna gaff a fish, typically. Uh, but on these smaller fish, basically just go for whatever you can get. And that's exactly what we did. Good one, man. Yes, that was a big one. Yeah,
So today we got a ton of swinger mahi and then we got a few gaffers and we had an absolutely amazing day. We caught 30 fish within two hours. I mean, that, that's considered a very, very good day and every single fish was legal. When you've capitalized on all these fish and there's mahi all around the boat and you're still throwing live baits out and they stop biting, we kind of try, we try, maybe we'll pick one or two or three more off, but generally we'll pick everything up and we'll run maybe a mile in either direction and we'll get the binoculars out and look for a fresh pack of birds, which is gonna be on a fresh pack of fish. First time fishing for mahi, I fish for other stuff, but I've always wanted to catch mahi. This is the first time, I love it. They're just such beautiful fish. What I really like about mahi fishing is that it's a great introduction into offshore fishing, meaning that everyone gets to get involved. You know, a lot of times it's people's first fish. You know, I forget as a professional angler, I've been doing it for 42 years. And I forget that when I take this guy out that's 50 something years old, he's never caught a mahi. And he looks at me and he says, Peter, I've never ever caught a mahi. This is the first one I've ever caught. And then his girlfriend or his wife, you know, someone says, I've never caught one either. It's my first one. Then the next one says it. And then you realize that this is an incredible way to introduce people into sport fishing. And from that point on, they're going to be hooked literally and physically and mentally <laughs> and emotionally, if you will. Mahi fishing is a great introductory fish into the offshore fishing world, hands down. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see more, please check out my show, Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller on the Discovery Channel, or you can check out my Instagram account, which is right here. And until then, I'll see you out on the water.